Three tips to be the most stylish man in the room. Guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can use this information to be the best dressed man, no matter where you go, if you're in a group of friends, if you're around other well dressed men, you will be able to stand out and basically separate yourself from the crowd. Why does this matter? Two reasons. Number one, men that look great, that just appear like they know what they're doing are assumed to know what they're doing. Basically, you come off as a leader. You come off as looking like the guy in charge. So when somebody walks in the office and they look around and they see you, they're like, wow, this guy looks like he's the man. Then they're going to go to you and that's how opportunity falls your way. And number two, when you dress the part, all of a sudden people assume not only you're competent but they trust you and they're more likely to give you a chance. Guys, this stuff matters and in this video, I'm going to give you three tips so that you can be the best dressed man no matter what industry you're in and no matter where you're going. Tip number one, be confident. Gentlemen, everything else I'm going to talk about comes behind this. You have to believe in yourself. You have to know what you stand for and you need to practice dressing sharp. So let me start off with part one. Know yourself. Know what you stand for. Let me use my personal example. I own Real Men Real Style. I help men around the world use clothing, use their image, use their presentation as a weapon to get what they want out of life. Now, if I told you that and you met me and I'm wearing an oversized t-shirt, dirty jeans and running shoes, are you going to believe or am I going to betray your expectations? Probably the latter. Also, I know that I dress sharp because I want to show my daughters what, you know, what they should be looking for. I want to show my son of how he should aspire to be. I want to dress sharp so that I'm still attracted and my wife is still attracted to me and I know that when I look in the mirror, I want to see the man that I know myself to be. I, I want to see this guy who I'm trying every day to live up to be. So I know my why, I know my purpose and I know my focus. Number two, know your history. And so whenever I wear clothing, a lot of people may say, oh, I would never wear a flower in my lapel. Well, if you understand what that stands for, you understand the history behind the boutonniere, then all of a sudden you have the courage to wear it. A necktie, you start to understand, oh, that has a very interesting history as well. Pocket squares, you realize that they just make a jacket look better and they have a very long storied history. And all of these things give you the ability to stand outside the crowd, do something different because you know that you are in the right and pretty much everyone else is following fashion trends or they don't even know that they're making the mistake. The third part of confidence is practice. Now, let's look at some of the top athletes in the world. They go into practice and you think they just go, you know, half speed. No, they oftentimes go full speed. And other people who aren't used to being around this level of quality of an athlete, they're like wondering what in the world's going on? This is just practice. And these world class level athletes, they're always going to say, you, exactly, because I practice the way I play in the game. And if you're not doing that with your image, if with your presentation, then you're not, if, when you go out there, you're putting on an act. But if you are the man, you know yourself to be and you practice that every day when the only audience is you, you will be that man whenever you step out for the world. Tip number two, own a statement accessory. All right guys, story time. Early morning flight from Appleton, Wisconsin down to Atlanta, Georgia. And this is the bag that I had with me. Grip number three, Colonel Littleton. And so I'm taking this bag. And I had three men go out of their way to talk to me about this bag and where it came from, its history, and I met three amazing people. A TSA agent who was actually former military, all of a sudden I met the pilot of the plane that I was going to be flying and I met another passenger, all of them, because they looked at me and they said, this guy is standing out from the crowd. That's a very interesting bag. They probably saw I was dressed relatively well and they said, hmm. I've got nothing to do. I might as well engage and talk with this guy and learn a little bit more about him. Gentlemen, that is what a statement accessory is all about, helping you stand out from the crowd and opportunity to come your way. Now, you've got to get the right statement piece for you and I can tell you this bag right here is my dream bag. I am, I love this bag and there are three things I really love about this bag and by the way, Go check out Colonel Littleton right here and let me know what is your dream bag over at this amazing Amer Made in the USA Americana company. And by the way, let me know in the details in the comments and who knows, we may make it happen. Actually, you may get one of these bags. I know I've got one that I'm going to give away at the end of this video so stick around. But this bag in particular, number one, I love the history and the design. This is based off the American grip. The grip was a bag that if you're riding a stagecoach across the American West or you're riding a train back in 1910, this would be the bag that you would take with you 
on the stagecoach or on the train. So the history, the leather that it's made from, and then all these, I mean, this thing really grabs attention. Mostly, I think, because of the hardware. So you've got this copper right here, you've got the, uh, the brass, and it is made, I mean, this thing is going to outlast me. So all of this going into a statement piece that I can pass on to my son. And when you own a statement accessory, no matter what it may be, I mean, it may be a bag, just you know, look at this one right here. Looks like it belongs on the side of a horse. And I love this because, hey, I used to, ri used to ride horses. I grew up in West Texas. We had horses. But you've got to find the right statement accessory for you. Tip number three, execute on the fundamentals. I know, guys, you've heard me say this before. Fit, fabric, and function. But you know what happens is that you guys hear it and very few people actually execute on it. Another story, I'm in Atlanta, I'm riding on the train there at the airport, but I'm next to a guy and I'm looking at him, I mean, relatively, I thought when he first came in, that's a good looking suit. And then I realized that suit is way too tight on him. He, maybe, you know, 20, 30 pounds ago, that suit worked for him, but at this point, the fit was totally off. Didn't matter that it was a beautiful suit. I love this tie combination and with his shirt, everything looked great, except that, I mean, it was just too tight on him and it made him look bad. He was well-dressed, except for the fact that he was missing the most important part, which is the fit. Next, after that, we want to look at the function. Are you wearing what is appropriate? I've talked about this before. If you are a master electrician, then and you don't want to be wearing a suit. You want to wear what is appropriate to your job so that you're fully protected, so that you feel good when you're there at work and you're able to get the job done. Now let's talk about fabric. So when I say fabric, I, what I mean by is oftentimes try to get the best that you can afford and move your way up. If you've got to sacrifice on anything, then get a lower quality fabric. Uh, I would rather you focus in on fit and function, but as soon as you can, start to upgrade there. Other key fundamentals that you need to execute on, always shine your shoes. I see a lot of guys travel for a week and they don't take any shoe polish with them. They don't even take a brush. Make sure to iron your clothing when you arrive. Understand the difference between actually sending your clothing out to the cleaners and when it just needs to get a spot clean and when you can use a steamer. All of a sudden, you're going to lengthen the life of your clothing. You're going to get more wear out of it. You're not going to have to worry about it fading and it not looking that great always be looking to open your mind. There are so many of us out there that we use those same necktie knot. I know I'm one of them. I'm always, almost, almost always using the four in hand. But notice I used a half Windsor. The reason I use the half Windsor is it works actually with the collar shape. So by making sure that you covered all your bases, that you know how to tie more than one necktie knot. And if you don't, I'm going to link in the description of this video some other videos where I teach you how to tie various knots and link to an infographic on 18 ways to tie a necktie. But the key here, execute on the fundamentals. All right, gentlemen, those are my three tips for being the best dressed man in the room, for standing out from the crowd in a good way and having opportunity come your way. Now, remember I said go check out Colonel Littleton. The reason I want you to go check out Colonel Littleton is that I've got one of their bags. We're going to be giving it away. I need you to let me know in the comments down below your favorite bag. Be specific. Be in detail which bag this is. Tell me how this is going to fit into your wardrobe, how it's going to help you in a positive way stand out from the crowd and own your image. Now, I do also want to point out, guys, if you look at the bottom of their website, they've got a place where you can actually order a catalog. And I think they only ship to the United States. Sorry about you guys outside the U.S. But what I love about this is you can go through here and, I mean, there are, I can tell you, I wish, I mean, I'm I love the bag I have and I already want I mean, their Navigator briefcase. Look at that bag. Amazing. Their campaign bag, the, uh, the book bag, the dispatch bag, the attache. I really like the attache and if you know the history of that bag, it's really, I mean, it's just amazing. Now, when I look at that company, the thing that really strikes me, they are the real deal. From the leather to the tanning to the build. Everything is done right here in the United States, most of it done right there in Linville, Tennessee. And they've been in business for almost 30 years just making, I mean, this stuff right here, this bag in particular, is actually in, what is it, the, uh, the Tennessee State Museum. Uh, they've got this bag. It was recognized. The Colonel designs all of this stuff. And I mean, it's little things like the hardware. Like, they've got these belts, and I really like this hook design right here. They've got this on their belts. He uses particular types of leathers which don't stretch. So you think about that, you get a belt, what's the worst thing that happens to it? It ends up stretching over time. So if you conceal carry or anything like that, you need a tough belt, a great company to check out. They've also got some really cool holsters. This is the real deal, a really cool company and I'm excited to bring them to you. I'm more excited to see who's going to win that back. So that's it guys. I'll see you in the next video.